Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at a somewhat wallet-friendly two-bay NAS from the good people over at QNAP. This is the TS-233. Is it worth it? Keep watching to find out. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at a somewhat wallet-friendly and budget-friendly offering from QNAP. This is the TS-233, it is a two-bay NAS. This is something I would consider if you are a relatively moderate computer user, or maybe you're in a household or a small home office, you've got a lot of data to back up, you're not entirely sure where to do it, or maybe at the moment you're relying on small network shares across the network and you've got replication of files everywhere, or perhaps you're one of those people there's a lot of you about that don't back up your systems, in which case, shame on you, you really should do, especially these days with Windows 10 and Windows 11 being, well, as flaky as ever. And as we see on our Discord on a pretty much daily basis, there's people that are losing data, unable to access their systems, etc., etc. You get the general idea. So it isn't only for those type of people, it's also for those of you that are maybe, maybe just a single PC, but you've got a ton of photos, videos, all those kinds of things which you want to store somewhere, you don't want to extort it, on your expensive SSDs and NVMe drives, so you're looking for something a little bit more cost-effective and with larger storage options. This potentially could be the thing for you. So first of all, let's talk about pricing. Now at the moment, as of the time of making this video, this is currently retailing under 200 pounds here in the UK. There will be affiliated links in the video description, which puts it in a, actually a very good place. It's not the cheapest, not the most expensive, it's kind of somewhere in that Goldilocks zone. So if you are looking for something, but you don't really want to splash out, but then you don't want to skimp either, this might be just the NAS view based on its performance and the specifications, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, before we get right into this, I should say that this has been sent to us free of charge for review purposes from QNAP themselves. They haven't asked me to say anything. They've just asked me to take a look at it, being as we've looked at other NASs recently and just see what we think of it. So you will be getting my honest thoughts. They haven't told me to say anything. So yeah, if there's good stuff, I'll let you know. If there's bad stuff, I will also let you know. So let's start off with the good stuff. Now, good stuff wise, at its price point specifications, it's pretty decent. We've got a quad core ARM processor running at 2.0 gigahertz, which is slightly better than some of the lower spec models on the market, which are a little bit cheaper, but I think most people you will benefit from the extra boost in speed. Also, this has got two gigabytes of RAM as standard. Sadly, you can upgrade the RAM, it is a fixed module, but two gigs is pretty much where you want to be. There are other devices on the market which have got either half a gig or even a gig, and you do start to notice that when you've got apps open or there's other background tasks running. With two gigabytes, it's pretty much good for most tasks. Also, something of note, this also has four gigabytes of built-in flash as well, which has got basically the kind of the operating system on it as well. So that is actually a dual level system. So if for some reason your primary boot option fails, then it will automatically and seamlessly go over to the second one. So availability wise, even if there's issues, hacks, all that kind of stuff, which can and does happen, then you should be covered. Other things of note, this is running on gigabit ethernet, which is something which possibly for some people is gonna be a blessing, because it means you don't have to invest on those still relatively expensive 2.5 gigabit network switches and also network cards. So you can add a relatively inexpensive eight port gigabit switch to your network, which is gonna cost you somewhere in the region of about 10 to 15 pounds, and you can share your data across the network very, very easily. Also comes with a single USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, two USB 2 ports, and effectively that is pretty much all you need to know. So let's take it out of the box and see what we actually get, and we'll go through some more of the features. As you can see, it's a two-bay NAS. Um, it's got NPU built in, so that's their neural network processing algorithms. It has got NPU acceleration built in, which is always nice, especially for things like your photos, for recognition, all that kind of good stuff. On the back of the box, it goes into some more of the specifications, which we've pretty much spoken about already, but I'll put a close up on the screen so you can see that for yourselves, and you can see the design of the unit itself. So going through what we actually get inside the box, obviously, get the NAS itself, which is uh, extremely cute. I do like this a lot. And actually, before we go into the rest of the bits here, we should talk about the design language of this. I really like this. I think it actually looks really cool. It looks very modern. It's very simplistic. It's also very compact as well. And best of all, it's extremely quiet. So if you are planning on maybe getting a NAS, but you're not sure entirely where you're going to put it, you can actually have it on your desk running next to your PC with all your stuff and you'll barely know it's on, apart from obviously the telltale bleeps if something goes wrong or there's some notifications. Of course, you can turn those warning bleeps off 
in the operating system should you wish to. But yeah, it's, uh, it's very small, not much bigger actually than the two drives are actually populated inside of it. And on the back, we've got all of our connectivity, so you can run that off the back of your desk with no worries there. You've got the single gigabit ethernet port there, you've got your two USB 2 ports, power jack going in there, and there is a reset button. And above that, we've got a fan at the top there, which is very, very quiet. And again, is configurable in the BIOS. So if you want to go in, you can set it to full speed, you can set it to medium, low, auto, all those kinds of things. But design wise, yeah, I think it looks very, very cool. On the bottom, you've got some really nice thick rubber feet on there to prevent any kind of vibrations going through desks. Although if you've got one of these kind of cheapy IKEA desks, which are hollow, then you may feel some resonance, but on most surfaces, absolutely fine. You barely know it's on. Also on the bottom, there is a single screw. Undo the screw and you can gain access to the drives, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. So included, we get the power brick. So pretty usual deal, barrel connector on one end, kettle style lead on the other. This is a 65 watt power brick, although you won't be using anywhere near 65 watts in idle. This is somewhere in the region of like three and a half watts when it's in sleep mode. When it's actually active, you're looking at somewhere closer to 11 watts. So yeah, very, very much something that's gonna be sipping power. Most of that thanks to the ARM four core processor, which is an extremely power efficient model. Also included, obviously, the kettle lead for the power supply itself. You get a two meter Cat5 cable, or I think that's a Cat5e, so that's included as well. You also get a bunch of literature, so you get a QNAP warranty guide, etc. The warranty itself, you can extend if you want to. There is a section in here. It comes with a two year warranty, a standard, but if you want to, you can increase that to up to five years, which I think is actually awesome. Uh, obviously, depending on your country, etc., the prices will differ. I'll put links for that in the video description also, should that be of something you're thinking of. And also, we get included some screws and fixings for installing drives into the unit itself, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so let's get back to looking at the device itself. So I've got, got some drives in here already. Drives aren't included, sadly. I wish they were for the, uh, the asking price of £200, but you do have to populate it with drives yourself. You can if you want to, you can use two drives, which uh, is what I've got currently set up in a RAID configuration. Or alternatively, you can just put in a single drive if you want to. Obviously, you don't get the data redundancy, but you still get network access and all the security features and all the streaming options, all that kind of good stuff. So it's going to be down to the end user to what you really want to do. If you value your data, obviously a RAID is going to be the way to go. If you're looking at this and thinking, well, actually, it's only two bays. If I RAIDed drives, I'm getting half the size, plus the kind of file system overheads, etc., it's going to be limiting. What am I going to do when I run out of space? Well, that's actually a really good question because you can expand this if you want to. QNAP do a range of add-on drives, which you can add on another two, four, or I think there's even a six bay version, which you can get obviously additional cost and there are other complexities involved when you've got multiple units. But if you're thinking of this as a starter drive and you want to then add on, you certainly can do. Again, I'll put some links for those expansion drives in the video description. Taking it apart, relatively simple to do. So the screw on the bottom, which we've uh, already undone and taken out, slide this plastic up and then off. And then this section is removable, giving you access to the drives inside. So at the moment, I've got two four terabyte Western digital drives in there. By the time they're formatted and the RAID is set up and there's a little bit of overhead for provisioning, all that kind of stuff, you're looking at somewhere around about the 3.2, 3.4 terabytes of actual storage that you can use. So easy to remove, they're on these little sleds. So that just removes out like that. And you can see I've got another drive there. And you'll probably notice actually, I've got two different types of drive in here, which isn't always recommended, but as long as they're a similar specification, you're absolutely fine in the game. It depends how mission critical stuff is. These drives are relatively well matched. So even though they're different brands, you can mix and match should you want to, or should you need to. To take them out, very simple to do. This drive sleds, just plastic sleds on the side, which hold the drive in place. So yeah, uh, pretty much a tool list design. So that's all really good. Looking inside, you can see there's not really a great deal in there. There's a motherboard, you've got the heat sink on the motherboard, a BIOS battery. Glad to see actually the BIOS battery, which is in here, which is uh, somewhere down here, is actually a regular battery. So it's a CR2032. So if for some reason it starts kind of going a bit wonky, forgetting the time, etc., which is extremely unlikely, but if you want to, you can remove it very easily like you would on a motherboard for a computer. So that's all really good. Some manufacturers actually have one which is kind of soldered to the main board, which uh, obviously gets to the point where it's at the end of its life when the battery goes flat with this. Not a problem at all. Good access to all the SATA ports on there and also the fan. So depending where you're leaving this, if you're in a somewhat dusty environment, 
then it's going to be nice and easy to open that up and give it a good clean should you need to. Again, very lightweight, very compact. The fan itself, if you want to, I have seen people remove the fans and you can replace these with smaller noctua ones or quieter noctua ones should you wish to. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think that's necessary at all. The fan is actually a very good model and very quiet. You barely know it's actually on and often the drives themselves are going to be louder than the fan itself. So yeah, excellent stuff there. Putting the drives back into the NAS, very simple to do. Yeah, just go in on the sleds there and lock into place. So yeah, very good. They're not going anywhere. And again, just put the, the top on. And you can do it the screw on the bottom and secure it. Onto the front of the unit. So we've got some LEDs and notification icons on the front here. So you've got I at the top, which is kind of like the uh, information button. If anything's going wrong, it'll be red. If there's a problem, green if it's all good. You've got your network activity light underneath that. You've also got a data copy light. So that's actually really cool. There is on the bottom here, we've got two buttons. One's a power button, one's a data transfer button. So if you plug in a drive to the USB 3 port on the front here, you can use that to actually transfer whatever is on that stick into a dedicated area of storage space on your NAS. So you press the button, it'll start transferring, light flashes on there. When it stops flashing, data transfer is done, etc., etc. Underneath that, usual things. So we've got drive one, drive two activity lights. Nothing uh, outrageous there, but certainly it is quite useful. If you're not too sure what's going on, you can just glance to the side and see what the ADs are doing. Alternatively, if you're not um, into doing that or you want to hide this somewhere, you can use applications either on your PC. So there is QFinder, which you can install on your PC, which is very easy to do. Just install it. This will find the NAS on your network and give you other options, such as setting up things like Wake on LAN, your network shares, just logging into the device itself, which is all very simple, very easy to do. Set up your passwords, all that kind of stuff. You can configure it to be as secure or as kind of flexible as you want. Generally, there is a sliding scale between security and flexibility. If you want to keep it ultra secure, then you can choose to not have this visible to the outside world. If, on the other hand, you want a little bit of flexibility, there is actually a 256-bit encryption between the data you send from your devices to this unit. So it's all hardware encrypted. So even if someone's kind of looking at your packets of data, they are encrypted from end to end, which is always nice to see. Yeah, you can have it so easy access to mobile phones, all that kind of stuff, or from IP addresses. Log into any internet-based PC, go on. You can type in your QNAP ID and go into the portal that way or through various apps on again, PCs, laptops, iOS or Android devices. All very flexible. You can make it as easy or as complex as you want to. So let's take a quick look at what the operating system itself looks like. So this is using the latest version of QTS5, which is basically a graphical user interface. If you've used a, a mobile phone before, then you're gonna be pretty much at home with this. It's pretty much all tile-based applications, icons, all that kind of stuff. You've got your usual stuff. So you've got your QNAP store. You can go in there and choose your various apps. So if you want to install an app for a certain specific task, then you can do. You've got all the things in there. So you've got things like your photo app, which is really nice and easy to use. You can go in and again, you can use that neural processing to identify individual pictures and put tags into them, all that kind of stuff. It's actually really good. I've put in some pictures of cars and things like that and it recognized the fact that, yep, it's a car, which is uh, really good to do. You can add your own custom tags if you want. So for me personally, if I'm doing a video review of something and I type in a tag for a motherboard, a specific type like A520 or something, I can then go into the search box, type in A520, and it will come up with all the pictures of boards with that tag on. So yeah, really good, very handy. When it comes to things like music, obviously similar sort of deal, you can transfer all of your music into folders onto the NAS, go into the app, and then you can share it across your network. You can actually share it across to other devices as well. So things like your Google Homes, you can connect up those and it will find them on the network. And then you can actually, from your PC or from the app itself, you can then use one of those kind of Bluetooth type speakers if they're on the network to actually send your music to, which is all really good. So you can actually configure your own in-home, whole home network sound system. Very, very easy to do. It doesn't really cost you anything because you already bought the NAS. When it comes to moving and managing files, you've got the file manager suite. So you can go in there, make any changes, move your folders, files, all that kind of stuff. And of course you can go in and set in individual folders, user rights, all that kind of stuff, add additional users. You can actually have up to 200 concurrent connections to this particular device using the SIFS protocol. So again, for relatively small home users, you're never gonna reach that, I wouldn't have thought. 
but for larger, maybe small home offices, that kind of thing, or actually in a dedicated workplace where maybe you've got 10, 20 users and they've all got shared folders and they've got map drives and all that kind of stuff, this is gonna be absolutely fine and it's gonna handle those connections very easily. So we've talked about some of the things this can actually do for you. We talked about the price and we've talked about some of the features. Let's look at some of the downsides. Now this wouldn't be a review of any sorts without actually going into some of those. So let's talk about one of the biggest problems in my opinion. And that is the fact that there is only two gigabytes of RAM and it's fixed. So if you do get to the point where you actually wanna use a bit more RAM, then yeah, you are stuck. All the expansion modules in the world are not gonna help with that. So system RAM is gonna be something which is gonna be a concern for some people. Just with the system idling and kind of doing its own thing, realistically, you should be somewhere in the region of just below a gig of RAM, just for file services and all that kind of stuff running in the background. So it doesn't leave you a great deal. Although, like I said earlier in the video, it is actually a lot more than some of the other models on the market, which are of a similar price point, which again, can come with only 512 megabytes or maybe just a gig of RAM. So certainly in terms of where it sits in the market, two gigs of RAM for this kind of price point is excellent, but it would be nice if it was actually able to be added to, maybe four gigs or six gigs would be excellent and give you a little bit more future proofing. The other thing, the gigabit ethernet, some models now on the market are having 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which certainly as time progresses and those 2.5 gigabit switches become more cost effective, then maybe that is something which would be nice. At the moment, we're gonna be looking at gigabit limitations on this. Of course, if you wanted to, you can actually get USB 3 and USB dongles, which you can attach this, which will give you up to five gigabit transfers. Again, if you're spending kind of less than 200 pounds on a NAS, there's a strong chance you're not gonna be needing that. Even with the one gigabit, which is what I'm actually using in my home network, we're finding network transfer speeds of around about 100 megabytes per second, which for most tasks is absolutely fine. Obviously for transferring things like movies via Plex, etc., is gonna be more than enough bandwidth. Although if you're starting to have multiple users and starting to really hammer the connection, then clearly things are gonna get a little bit choppy. Now talking of choppy, let's have a look at some of the footage in the video app. So this is actually a 1080p video, which uh, is one of my old videos, which is on the NAS playing, and it plays really well. And here's an example of it scrubbing through the timeline so you can see what it's this like and how responsive it is. G, but does it work with the One of which is a Corsair LPX, unfortunately, due to either a limitation in the RAM that we uh, processor-wise, or rather placeholder for the processor, etc. So, um, yeah, we're here. So this is the one that I've currently done. Again, I've not managed to get this to run XMP in any way, shape, or form. I've got let's take a look at the uh, system and we'll go through the individual parts and show some of the results that we could do it. But I suppose the real time was reset. So that V color RAM as well will work, kind of. It is the results that I've got. And actually, this is mostly down to the fact that we've not been able to enable the XMP profile on the RAM. So there you go, plays pretty well. I liked it a lot, didn't seem to be any kind of lag or any discrepancies or any kind of real buffering. It just seemed to play and it seems to do that very well. So let's look at the end result here. Who is this aimed at and should you buy one? So the first thing, who is it aimed at? Clearly it's gonna be aimed at a lower or moderate use case scenario. So obviously in the home situation, five, six users, is gonna be absolutely fine. For backing up your PCs, using NetBack, that kind of thing, which is an application you can install on your PC and it'll just take care of all the automated backups is excellent. For that sort of purpose, this is gonna be great. It's a centralized system, stick in a couple of larger drives in there, take some snapshots of your systems, keep all your data safe and secure. And obviously, if you can, off of the cloud, have it on your own personal cloud. Of course, if you want to, you can expand this and you can have kind of a hybrid backup situation this does fully sync with your things like Dropbox, Google Drives, Amazon Web Services, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to actually back up onto the NAS and then back up your NAS to one of those offline cloud services, you certainly can do, and all that is totally encrypted as well. So nice, safe, secure data. Other people that just maybe want to bunch a ton of films on there, get some torrents, put your films on there, put your TV shows on, put your music on, and just enjoy it as a media consumption device. With that two gigs of RAM, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Although obviously when you're getting into some of those super, super high bitrate 4K films, then the processor may start showing signs of strain. But again, that's down to the price point it is. So is it worth buying? Yes, but do temper your expectations. This is a 
somewhat entry level NAS, although the specs are somewhat better than some of the others on the market for a similar price point, it still does have some limitations due to that ARM processor. So anyway, that has been the QNAP TS233. I like it a lot, but let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.